The Hyundai Santa Cruz is naked without these things. A few must-haves for the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive MT. And that's right, the Hyundai Santa Cruz is naked without these things. Just a few things that the Santa Cruz needs to improve it a little bit, to make it a little bit better. You know, the Santa Cruz is pretty darn good fresh out of the box. There's really not a lot you need to do to it, but there are a handful of things. Number one, window tent. You know, window tent serves a lot of different purposes. One, it looks cool. It makes the truck look cool. Two, it keeps that bright blinding sun out of your eyes. You know, if you've ever taken off to go to work in the morning, something I don't need to do anymore. I used to when I had a brick and mortar, you know, an eight to five kind of job. But you'd be getting on the freeway if you had to go that route. And you'd go to merge and you look to the left and there's that sun blinding you as you're trying to see traffic while you're hoping to get a spot. Then at night when you clock out, if you still clock out and you're headed home and you're getting back on the freeway again and now the sun is coming in from the same side because it's moved and you're going the other way and it's blinding you again. It serves a great purpose for safety as well as comfort when you're driving in those kind of conditions. Also helps to protect the interior a bit. Cuts down on the UV rays, makes it so it doesn't fade as much. It even cuts down on the heat a little bit. Window tent, that's a must have. Number two, wax. You know you need to protect your paint. It's bad enough that you have to drive your Hyundai Santa Cruz anyway, right? Worst thing you can do for a vehicle is to take it out on the road and drive it. Kind of counterproductive, isn't it? I mean, isn't that why you buy it? But as soon as you get out on the road, you're subject to all kinds of things bird droppings, acid rain, little chips from stones and things that fly up from other vehicles. You know, down here in South Texas, where I'm at, it's particularly bad. For some reason, they like to use asphalt, and it's probably a, a function of the heat. It's so hot down here. But little stones pop up all the time. I'd say 95% of the vehicles you see down here have chips and cracks in the windshield. It's because of all those little stones and things. So you need to do everything that you can to protect it. Wax will do that, at least as far as protecting the paint from bird droppings and environmental things, acid, rain, whatever, just to make it last a little bit longer. Nothing you can do about the chips and things, unfortunately, unless you go with a clear bra or something, but I'm not really into those. Next up, number three, tailgate letters kind of dress up the Santa Cruz a little bit so it's not so naked. You know, on the back, it has the stamp tailgate, right? It says Santa Cruz back there, but it's exposed. It looks kind of bare. It just dresses it up a little bit. And there are a myriad of different designs you can choose from. Everything from different colors and the flag and all kinds of stuff to just black and different colors. I prefer the black. I think it looks really good on the blue stone that I have. Anything to dress it up a little bit so it's not quite so naked back there. Number four, rail tie downs. You know, this is something I kind of went back and forth on. I thought, do I really need this? And then I figured, gee, if I'm ever hauling anything in the back of the Santa Cruz, because it can haul, it's nice to be able to tie something down that's a little bit taller. So you put the side rail tie downs in, and I have a video on the install. It can be a little bit daunting because you do have to cut through the cap that's on the rails, but it's really not that difficult. And they did give us a little pattern to follow. Easy install once you get past that, and just something very handy to be able to tie things down should you be hauling anything that's a little bit taller. Next up, number five the bed wall or the bed board for cargo retention. Now, what I'm talking about, if you've seen mine, and I'll flop a picture here, you have the bed and it has the composite floor, if you will, the plastic floor. Well, when you put anything back there, it's very slippery. It's like ice back there. 
and it slides all over the place. You know, there's nothing worse than going to the grocery store. You got those stupid plastic bags that really don't hold anything. You throw your stuff back there, you go home and they've rolled around all over the place. Everything's come out and it's up against the back of the bed. Now you gotta crawl in there or grab a rake and start pulling things out. It's a drag. With the cargo management board, in my case, there are other solutions. People use cargo netting and all kinds of different things. But with the board that I've put in there, things sit right up against it right there and easily accessible so you can just pop the tailgate with the key, by the way, pretty cool feature, and grab whatever it is that you had in there. You know, I did a video in my Tacoma a while back and it has the same kind of bed, a composite plastic bed. And I put a cooler in there as well as some other things. And then I went for a ride. I had a camera up mounted looking down at the bed and it was amazing to me, even at slower speeds, how much that stuff moves around. You know, as soon as you step on the brake, that stuff's still traveling at speed and it's not gonna stop if it's sliding until it hits something. And that's what happened in that video. Everything would slide forward because the truck is stopping and end up slamming into the bed or the sides, the front of the bed. And then that's where it would stay. It's really odd. It never seemed to come back to the end so that you could just grab it when you get home, always likes to stay right up at the front of the bed. With the bed board, the cargo management board, you don't have that problem. It would just stay right there. And I even put some hooks in mine so I could hang those bags if I wanted to. Again, there are many other solutions out there for that. People say, some people, that they actually received a cargo net when they bought their Santa Cruz. Now, maybe I got shortchanged, maybe that's some extra package, you know, a cargo net for $300 when it costs like 10, but maybe that's part of a package that I didn't get, I'm not sure. But even further, I've looked around in there and I didn't see a good way to secure something like that. Plus it has holes in it and once it's exposed to the elements and everything else, they're not gonna last that long unless you have the tonneau cover. And that's the last thing I'm gonna mention is the tonneau cover to kind of dress the Santa Cruz up a little bit so it's not so naked. Plus it's very handy. I highly suggest getting the one that comes with the truck. It works great, it's a hard tonneau cover. I believe it will support a couple of hundred pounds. So with the bed rail tie downs, you could even secure something on top of it as long as you don't go too heavy. Very convenient, it locks, it works great. If you're not familiar with it, it rolls out, it pushes in, very easy to maintain. I love having it on mine and I think it should probably come standard on every Santa Cruz. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here a little bit and kind of go over the things to make the Santa Cruz not so naked. You need these things, at least I did. Leave a comment, let me know. Did I miss anything? I'd be curious. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels, Rob Motive, all about Toyota Tacomas, and Rob Motive JT, all about the Jeep Gladiator. Check them out, and if you're interested, why not subscribe? Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and wear clothes. <laughs> Bye.